Okay, we're back, and it's COP through eight, and it's um, week six, lesson six, part three. And we're going to quickly talk about, okay, now that we've got our styles in here, and again, I'm going to make one more page, so we'll link this down. And let's say I made a page that was kind of some kind of uh, uh, another page that had a bunch of, um, uh, I'll kind of come in here, and, and I'm going to call this almost like a, uh, uh, my data page, or whatever, or my selection. My selection page. I don't want to give you all everything up from the exam. So I'm going to call it my selection page and I'm going to put in here a, a bunch of um, check boxes. All right, so I've got photos, photo input, I've got my file input, I got my radio buttons. And this is what I want to put in. So I want to kind of create some radio buttons in here. And you know what? I want to add in, you know, four options, right? And instead of where it says choose at the top, Right? So here's my radio buttons itself. And my title is not going to be choose. It's going to say, let me say I make this uh, like a question like, what is your favorite browser? Right? Let's say I do that for the title, right? And then option one, I can kind of put in there and say uh, the text uh, instead of option would be uh, IE. Right? The value, see where it says radio one? I can put that as IE, that's the value, right? Whatever I want. Uh, for option two, here's my option two. Option two would be uh, Chrome, right? Here's my text. My value would also be Chrome, whatever I want to make it. That's, what's that's what I can access. And my option three, my option text would be uh, Firefox. And my value would also be Firefox. So what it shows and what my value is in this case is the same. You can make it different. And my last one would be um, Safari, right? Those, those are po most popular ones. Okay. So I've got all that in there and press uh, I'm good with these selections, right? So these are my selections. And let's say I want to make another button on the bottom. Here's a button. But I mean, I, get, I guess I can use submit, right? Or I can just have a regular button. Kind of, because I don't have a form, and I want to make this button so that it's uh, inline, so it's going to be smaller. There it is, and um, you know I can choose where my icon position is. Instead of it being, uh, say, button, I can choose next. If I was going to, if I had more than one of these pages, right? Hint, hint. This is what you're going to see on your exam. I'm trying to help you, right? To, pa to pass with flying colors, right? So you have your button here. And you're going to click next. And I can even, if I want to, add in an icon, right? Although I don't need to, but I could. So I can choose an icon, right? Um, if I want to, but let's leave it alone. My, I can also choose my icon position where it is, on the right side or left side or whatever. If I, obviously, the choosing piece doesn't work for now. Oh, I think it's because I made it inline. Um, anyway, so I, I have all this stuff. And I want to use this as my selection page. right? It's called my selection page, whatever. And I don't have a header and footer for now. Let's just leave that out. So I'm going to go code. Okay, and here's all this stuff. And it's called uh, page five. No, I don't want that. I want to call this page selection. Right, here's my selection page. And I save. Right, and I want to go code and grab all this stuff. Now it's a selection. And I want to copy. And I go back into my pages here and um, on, on the bottom here, let's say instead of making it a uh, about me, I made a selection, some kind of selection. I select what I like, right? Almost like a little uh, survey. I'm going to put it between my wrapper. So here's my content. Did I do this right? My contact page. Hold on. And By looking at the right one, yes. Because I have two, I have two uh, wrappers here. I'm going to put it between this one. Okay, here's my contact page, or my selection page, if you will. And if you look at it, my controls and everything here, I've got you know my type is radio, right? And if you notice, the ID here is radio one, right? As an example, radio two, radio three, radio four. That's my ID. Right? And my value, it has different values. So this is radio 1, radio 2, radio 3, radio 4. I could change these um, 
these labels I, uh, from ID, radio 1, radio 2, radio 3, radio 4, to whatever I want. But for now, let's leave them the same. Right? How would I use jQuery to target the value that I get from my radio button? How do I use JavaScript to target the value that I get, which it would be IE for this radio 1, right? How do I use that? So I'm looking at the value from my input from my from my uh, um, from my radio button. It's an input type, right? My my rate my input type is radio. There's different kinds of inputs, right? So when I have an input tag with a value of IE, <coughs> how do I get that into JavaScript? Well, let's go into JavaScript. Let's go. So here's my scripts. I have uh, my own custom script called mobile.js, I'm guessing. Here it is right now, right? I want to use it. I want to set up a, a tag that says var, um, let's say, uh, favorite browser. Favorite browser. Let's say this, that's my, my, my thing. And I'm going to use, uh, if I use JavaScript, just JavaScript, I'm going to go document dot get element. Now there's different get elements. I can go get element by tag name. Right? I can get element by, uh, by ID, right? I, my ID is kind of funny. It's radio, right? So that doesn't make any sense, right? I could get element by class name if I had a certain class for each of them, right? Um, so probably by tag name would be correct. So my tag is what I want to look at. And I can target this thing. I can say, what's the string of my tag name? So if I go back to my index, if I'm targeting this tag, right, it's um, looking at input tags. Okay, well, there's more than one input tag, right? So I can get all the input tags. I can add up all the input tags, and I can create almost like an array of input tags, right? So I want to look at my input tag, but I want to also look at my value ID, right? And this is where jQuery Mobile is a little better, right? Because jQuery Mobile doesn't just do things by ID or by tag name. Um, you can look up a quick shortcut for jQuery Mobile if you don't remember how to do it. If I go jQuery Mobile uh, get element by tag name, what's the equivalent? Let's go, let's go in here and look that up. jQuery Mobile, J, sorry, not jQuery, jQuery get element by tag name. How do I do that? Right? Then if you look at Stack Overflow or some other um, quick fix, if you don't know how to do it, if you can't remember, and this is what I would ask you to do on the exam too is if you look at it, he says, look, it's kind of very simple, isn't it? It's the tag name goes here, right? And then I want to go through each of the, I'm going to go almost like this for each loop, and I'm going to do this anonymous call, this anonymous function that goes through every time it goes through each of the tags, and I'm searching for the value, I'm adding, them up, I'm adding the values up for each of the tags, if I wanted to do it that way. That's okay. I could totally do that, no problem. But if I want to get... Uh, and that's for each of the tags. So each of the tags that, that are named input with a type of, um, you know, the type that I'm getting from them is, if you look back at the page, again, I'm trying to isolate how do I get the value. I'm looking for this value, right, for this input. Now, it's kind of funny, right? But I need to know, first of all, if the element is checked. Right, because right now the radio tag, the radio button started off unchecked. So that's the first thing I got to check. So if my input tag, I look through the input tag. If it's checked, if my input tag is checked, that's the value, right? Then I want to get that value and assign it to my to my my uh, top browser. Okay. So how do I again going back to online? If you didn't know how to do such a thing, uh, I would now your Google foo's got to be strong. Okay, I'm going to allow Google on the exam. No problem. But this is the reason why I do this, because as developers, we're going to use this thing <coughs> for the answer, right? We're going to say something like this, jQuery um, get value of, of radio box. Look, get value of radio, all right? How can, I get, how can I get which radio is selected via jQuery? Okay, clack. And then it says this, input, this is what I'm looking at, and this is your the name of the radio, radio name. Well, our radio name is like... Uh, radio one, and I gotta check if it's checked. All right, that's one way to do it, right? But that's the way we can look at it. The colon checked is the is the uh, 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 is the filter, 
that I'm looking at. So I want to look at all the radio buttons, but I only care, I only care about the ones that are checked, right? I'm going to use the colon for that. That's the filter that I'm going to use in my jQuery. And then I'm going to get the val, I'm going to use the val method to get the value back, I don't care about my form, the value back into my, into my variable using jQuery. Let's take a look. So I mean, it's going back here. If I was going to format this instead of using JavaScript, because JavaScript is going to be way longer than this, right? I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go, um, I'm looking for the element that I'm hitting, right? So I'm looking for um, an input, right? With, and I'm looking for the value of an input that's checked, right? That's what I'm looking for, a value of the input that's checked, any value for, for each of them, because there's many of them. So each checked value, right? Is where I'm going to run this function. I'm going to I'm going to make I'm going to assign them for each of them, right? Or I can simply look for there's only one of them in this particular case that checked in this particular answer, right? And I'm going to get the val, the value of uh, of that uh, thing. So if I'm right, and if I run this thing, when I run this when I run my uh, browser, I'm going to check to save any input. Any input is checked from my any uh, I'm going to get the value of any input button that's been checked. In this particular case, uh, case, I'm going to save this thing, and it's going to store it in favorite browser. And I want to output that thing, so I'm going to go console.log, and then favorite browser. Right? What is what is my favorite browser? I want to see if I can capture that thing. Okay. So that's the first thing. You got to be able to target what you're looking at right here. Okay. And it, we're going to use index two to do that. We're going to look at index two because remember jQuery. Um, when I look at index two. My mobile.js is being activated, is included both in my index and my index2 in this particular case. Right? I'm just activa activating the one because I'm running it here locally. I'm running the one that's in my index2. Now I've got to be able to get to my selection because I haven't done that yet. Because now in my, in my uh, little uh, um, nav bars, there is no way to get my, sele my selection page. So let's do that. Make, let's make a button. As an example, if I look at example buttons in my selection page here, let me go to my selection page for a second. Here it is. Just to separate it for you guys so you can see it. Selection page wrapper. Right, here's my selection page wrapper. Inside here, uh, I want to I already have a button for next. So this is the way the button would look, right? And this is my this is the code that I would put in. So I'm going to take the same Kind of code and put it inside uh, my um, my first page. So if I want to just hit my selection page as an example. So before my footer and inside of my content, which is going to be right in here, I'm going to put another button, and my button is going to be called, um, and it's going to go to my selection. My href is going to be selection. Um, it's going to take me there. My data inline is equal to true. And I'm going to say, go to my selection, right? Okay, let's try this out. So I'm going to run this thing. If we're good, I've got my selection button, right? Let me just scrunch, scrunch in here so it looks like a mobile site. Uh, scrunch in here. I'm going to click selection. It takes my selection. I have my options. What is your favorite browser? I want to say uh, IE, right? Uh, and once I've said say that and go next. Right? It should take me back to whatever page I go. Now, right now, it takes me back here. Right? But I want to go back. Once I select it next, I want to, it's already selected. I should, my jQuery should be kicking out. Right? If I go to my, J, my JavaScript console, right? if I've done things correctly, now it says fail to load resource. Um, my resource is not found. Right? It should have written it out here. Right? Now, it didn't because I've selected it here. Right? But it didn't do anything in my form. And of course, the best thing to do for this is to put this inside a form control, each one of these things in a form control. So when I click next, it submits the value. Right? So it actually changes the value physically on the form. So these are things to note. These are the things I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to say, from all these, I'm going to have not one selection page, I might have five selection pages. I'm going to say, tally up all the selections from the selection page and add them into a variable. That's going to be on your exam. Not that difficult. But you need to know the, the way to do it. And jQuery, jQuery would be the easiest way to do it. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can fix this thing, this problem. So again, I don't have a form control 
And when I click on this button, as an example, this button, I can definitely put together a, because uh, right now it goes to selection. That's what this button does. This is cool, right? But this button here that's inside my selection page, I don't want it to go to selection. I don't want it to go anywhere, right? I want to get rid of this. What I want this to do is when this button, and again, my uh, I can make give it an ID, uh, you know, of uh, selection button, right? I can do whatever I want, right? I can target this button. I can create a click event. So when the button is clicked, I can I can call uh, to check to to get jQuery to check for me, right? And see what the what the selection is so to assign it to my favorite browser, as an example. So first of all, let's make it so that the, the click event works with my selection button. So I'm going to go back to mobile.js, and I'm just I'm just going to comment this out for a second, right? I comment this out, and down in here I'm going to kind of go like this. I'm going to say um, I'm going to target the button. So I'm going to say the ID that that I'm trying to select is uh, is called selection button. That's the ID, and I want to use my click event. Right, so when the event is clicked, then what do I want to do? I can do an anonymous function inline, or I can call a callback function. So in this particular case, I'll use my callback function. So here's my selection button. I'll call this um, selection button clicked. I haven't made this yet. And my selection button click function, let's say I'll put it up here. Right? And inside here, let's do a console for now. Let's do a console.log that says clicked. So I know that this works. Okay? And let's go back to the to the page and refresh. Let's refresh this page. Here's my mobile. Sorry, click this next. I click this first and click next. And it says clicked. See? We're good. So we actually, if I click this a bunch of times, it's gonna do this. Now that so now what I'm gonna do is when it's clicked in here. I want to use my selection to, to find my, um, my uh, favorite browser and output it to the screen. Okay, so let's try that now. So here, when, it, when button, my button is clicked, I want to look at my um, input, my input selector, and when I want to say that it's checked, any input that's checked, right? Um, and I want to get the value from that input that's checked back into a variable, right, like I said before, called, let's say, favorite browser. Okay, so if this is cool, right, this will take this and put it in here. Let's see if we get an error by doing this. So I go back to my code, I refresh my screen, right, and I click next, and this is clicked. So I don't get an error. I'm good. So, so far, I'm good, I'm good to go. There's no errors. Now, I may not do what I want it to do. Let's try printing it out now. Console.log, right? And then favorite browser, right, is what I want to put in here. If I can actually type this in properly with some code hinting. Okay, cool, cool. Let's try this now. Refresh the, the fresh screen, right? I click I, IE, and next, and I get IE. See? So what I'm doing is I'm actually saying, give me the value of this thing. And I want to take this, I want to, I want to use jQuery. I'm using jQuery to target the input control, and I'm only targeting the control that's checked, not the other controls, because I don't care about those. If I was to do it again, for the same, I'd choose something else. Now, notice how I can choose all of them. What happens there, right? And why can I choose all of them? They shouldn't be allowed to be choosed. There's another, there's another uh, input control that I have to use here, not the one that I used. If I click next now, right, well, look what it's going to say. It's going to still say IE because that's the first one it finds. If I don't click this one, if I uncheck this one, I don't know if I can uncheck them. Can't. Let's check uh, Chrome and click next. This is Chrome, right? I can't uncheck this because the way I formatted my controls. But let's say, for example, if I go back to Kodika, this is all in here, right? Eh? If I look at my, my actual uh, checkboxes. Here's my checkboxes. Right now, for my um, my radio buttons themselves, the whole radio buttons, I can give them an ID, right? 
So what, what your favorite browser is this? And I can say favorite browser. Right? And my orientation is vertical, that's fine. If I go into each control though, for my items, right, I have a value and a theme for each of my items. And the problem here is, and I'll tell you right now, I know what the problem is, that when I do my control group, my control group for these buttons, and this is where it's a little different here on Kadika than it would be on the live site. If I go to jQuery Mobile, if I go to my jQuery Mobile docs for my, uh, my widgets, my radio widget, and this is, I mean, it's just as good. I still get my code, my, uh, I still get code snippets here. And I want to use the vertical group. Well, I got to use this data role is equal to control group container, right? So here it is right here. This is what it should look like. Input, right? Uh, my legend is vertical. That, that legend is what my question is, right? So what is your favorite browser? Here's my control group. Here's my radio. Uh, and this is for the, um, the type is radio. The name is my, my choice, so a choice uh, version 2. And the name for them all has to be the same. So instead of name being radio choice, if you notice, uh, it would be like, um, the name would be like the name of my control group, browser, 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 browser. It would all be the same because it has to be the same name, right? But the ID here is all the different ones. ID has to be all different, and the value has to be all different. Okay, and notice no, no, one is automatically checked as a default. I don't want anything automatically checked. But I need them all part of the same control group, Right, and I need them the four and the name to be the same. So if you notice the four, this this four four right here is two A, two B, and two C. This has to be the same as the ID, right? That's that's the pattern, and the name itself is the name for the whole question, right? Not for each individual member. So going knowing that, if I go back to my code, right, to fix that up in my index.html, look at these radio buttons. And immediately I have an issue, right? My four should be the same as my value and my name, right? So here's my name. The name is the name of my radio radio group. I don't even have a radio group. I'm going to call this favorite browser. That's my favorite browser question, right? So I'm going to take all this and put it in here. So favorite browser is the name of my question, right? The value i.e. Chrome, Firefox, Safari, all these things, if I go back to the, to the thing, the ID could be the same, radio, you know, whatever it is. Here's my ID. My ID is radio choice A, B, C, different, different IDs, just like it is here. Radio 1 and radio 2 and so on. And if you notice, the 4 and the, and the ID are the same. doesn't matter. That's, what it has, that's the pattern. Okay, now if I run this thing, so if I go back into the question, if I rerun this thing, now I, can only, I should be able to only choose one. Right? Not each one of them. That's one of the, the problems people have had in the past. And if I click Safari and click Next, it gives me Safari. If I click Firefox and click Next, it gives me Firefox. Right? And that's what I want you guys to do in the exam. I want you to know, I want you, to know you can use this video, right? Study what I'm telling you because I'm going to have not just one of these questions. I'm going to make you create a survey of questions. Right? And the survey might have 10 questions that you're going to have to upload to, the, to, the, to this thing. And I want you to be able to tally the, the answers to these things using jQuery Mobile or J and jQuery into a dialog box. Tally means to say how many A's, how many B's, how many C's, how many D's, right? How many of those? And I want you to tell me in a dialog box. So let's go back to jQuery Mobile. So I, we just looked at here the, uh, this is the, um, the widget. So this is the best way to study. Study jQuery Mobile. Get your assignment two going, right? So you understand the structure of jQuery Mobile, which will help you on your exam. I'm trying to train you for ex your exam here, right? So you knew this front end stuff. And then one of the things I want you to use is a little bit of JavaScript and jQuery, if you will. So that way I, you can show me that you understand a little bit of JavaScript and jQuery, because that's part of what we're doing here with, with emerging technologies, right? You need to know JavaScript and jQuery uh, in order for you to go to the next step, step because we need to use JavaScript and jQuery a lot in, in the second half, right? Yes. So, for the test, would you also have something like drop downs and other no. things? No. Okay. Just one. I'm not going to make it too complicated, okay? Because yeah. otherwise, you can't be. Uh, I can't expect you in two hours to learn. to learn everything that I'm asking you to do. Look at my assignment and build something that works, right? Too much. So one control, okay? So just nice and easy for you. Trust me.
It's an open book. Everything's going to be open. It doesn't matter. I can give you open book as much as I want. It won't matter. You need to know how to do this. Right? If you don't know how to do it, it doesn't matter how open book it is. Yeah. What's that? If you want to. It's going to be hard, right? Because you're going to have to sip through and figure out what I'm doing, right? But at the end of the day, it's like using Google, right? So if you use Google, it's the same thing. I'd recommend that. Um, and you might say, hey, I've never had a access to Google before. I need to, you know, I normally I've had to know how to do this, Tom. Guys, no developer has no access to Google anywhere in the world, all right? If I need to know something, I'm going to go up on Google and figure it out, especially if I'm doing web. There's just so many options and so many things. So you've free access. It doesn't matter. It won't help you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you don't know what you're doing, if you haven't done these things, this, this stuff, it won't matter because you only have two hours to do everything. That's the test, right? So I can give you as much uh, access as, I, as, as you'd like. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's one. Remember, so those are the two pieces. And I want you to do this in this... You go to pages, this is the other piece that I told you about, and you got to do this in this dialog, right? Well, the only difference between my selection page and making it a dialog is this, data dialog is equal to true. So let's make that a dialog now. So I'm going to go in here to my page, so any data role that I put in here, right, I want to make this data dialog, right, data dash dialog, if I do this correctly, is equal to true, right, for this whole page. So my data role is page, my data control is title is this, my selection is this, my data dialog is equal to true. Let's see, if that's, let's see if that works. I save everything, I go into my page here again and refresh. Now it's a dialog. See how it popped up like that? I can still choose the same things, right, and I still have the same selections in here, but now it looks like a dialog. How does it look on the original pages? Let's go back. So I'm going to go back to my, here, kill all this stuff here, and just run it from scratch for a second, just so I show you what I'm talking about. So here I'm running this page, index.html2, and I have this selection button down here, see? I click onto it, and normally what you'd see is a new page, like contact me, whoop, home, whoop. Selection, though, doesn't do that. It goes like this, whoop, pops up like a dialog. That's the dialog. It's just a trick, really. It's just another section of your page inside of a wrapper. It's the same page wrapper we're using every time, but the appearance of the page looks different. So you can make some really nifty looking pages, very uh, native um, iOS, Android-like pages that'll come up, that'll look very professional with a little bit of markup. Okay. I just put, actually I put it inside the page wrapper. So here's the page wrapper for the selection page that I made. And I just, I just put this data tag, data-dialog is equal to true, and it turns on that dialog look. That's all it does. Is it like a pop-up? It's a pop-up. It goes pew. So if you actually looked at it on your phone, if you actually made your site, looked at it on your phone, it would go poop, pop-up, and it's almost like an overlay. It's like a message box. Like a message box, but the message box, you can put whatever data you want in there. And the data that I want you to put in there is not this, this little uh, selection, but the a tally, which means adding up all the A's, B's, C's, and D's of each of the other questions that you're going to see, okay? Well, you have to make sure that each of the question, when you click next on the question, it adds into the tally. It adds one, to, for whatever it's checked, it adds one to the tally. That's the trick, okay? Do you guys understand? Okay, that's it for me. Let's check out your work. Let's work for the next, the last bit on your, on your site.